How does a dead man find love again six years after he has been buried while well, fasting your seatbelt? Because this might just be one of the most realistic story of a ghost. In fact, this picture you see right here is believed to be that of a woman and a husband who turned out to be a ghost. In this particular picture, the man you see happens to be a ghost at the time this picture was taken. If I'm correct, this is a picture of a ghost. So how did we get here? Well, let's begin. So Angela was said to be in her 30s, single and living alone in a town in Lafia, Nasarawa state. Although she was born and brought up in Benway state where she used to live with her parents, but due to the intense pressure for her to get married, she had to leave. All her mates were getting married. In fact, it became worse when her best friend and business partner, Veronica, got married. The pressure doubled. And so she knew she had to focus herself on her business because at this point, no man was coming for her. She used to have a lot of boyfriends back then when she was in Benway State, but none of them took her serious enough to make her a wife. Her mother was not in support of her moving to Lafia to live alone and start an orange selling business. The mom told her that why don't she come to the village and farm and eventually or find a man to get married and do whatever she wanted to do in the man's house. But her father was in support of her. The father even gave her money to start up the business in Lafia. And that was what she was doing until 2011. So in February of 2011, it was said that she went from Lafia to town to get oranges for her businesses. Uh, on her way coming back, she boarded a taxi and the driver charged her 2,600 naira. And she was pleading with the driver to take 2,000 naira. And the driver refused. That was when a man sitting in the front seat offered to complete the money for her. And so that was how she met her future husband, Joseph Tiopenda. While they were in the vehicle, the two of them started exchanging pleasantries. They started talking. They introduced themselves to each other. Joseph said that he's from Taraba State and that he recently just relocated to Lafia to start a new life and that he was a barrister practicing law. And Angela introduced herself as a businesswoman from Benway State and that she also has been living in Lafia for a while. She even offered to show him around since he was new to town. That was how they basically just connected and became friends. And subsequently, they started dating. For Angela, she has found love. This is all she's been looking for. In fact, at this point, she was not going to even compromise. She was willing to do anything to make this man happy. Hopefully, the man would marry her. Eventually, their dating life became very serious and so she got pregnant. And that was when Joseph asked for a hand in marriage. Angela was excited. She took Joseph to Benway State to meet her family. The mother was excited because the mother has been rooting for her to get married since. So this was more like a dream come true for the mother that her daughter is finally getting married in her 30s. Who would have thought? So while they were doing all the rights to the marriage, Joseph was said to have done everything that the people asked him to do regarding the marriage rights, but they refused to take the bride price because from their culture, the thief culture, they frowned at men paying bride price for pregnant women. So they encouraged them to go back to Lafia and when she has given birth, they can come back to pay the bride price. And that was it. That was how they went back to Lafia. Soon afterwards, Angela and Joseph moved in together. Now, it was said that they lived in a very secluded neighborhood in a community in Lafia there. So that was where they started building a home together. Angela was fully pregnant and after nine months, she gave birth to a son whom they called Joseph Jr. So obviously things was going well with Angela and her husband. This is all she has always wanted. A man, a family, a business. This was a dream come true for her. However, there were signs that this man was giving to her that would have given her a heads up or given her a hint that at least maybe she wouldn't have thought that her husband was a ghost. It would have made her see that this man was maybe unusually different. These were the signs that Angela claimed she noticed while she was with him that would have probably given her a hint that her husband was a ghost. Now, she only realized all of these signs after the fact. While she was in the marriage, while she was with him, these things did not exactly occur to her that this man was different. One of the first signs that she noticed was that Joseph was unusually quiet. And whenever she confronted him as to why he's so quiet, Joseph always said that he was thinking about his family back home. Now, 
At the initial time when they were dating, Angela did ask him why he left Taraba State to come and re relocate to Lafia. That was when Joseph revealed to her that the reason why he left Taraba State was because his family were killed in a communal herdsman clash. And of course, at the time, it was said that there was a lot of herdsmen Fulani clashes in Taraba State leading to a lot of casualties. And so when Angela asked him why he was always quiet, Joseph always gave that excuse that he was thinking about his family back in Taraba State that were killed in the crisis. And so Angela did not think too much of it. Another sign again that Angela would have picked up on was the fact that Joseph was very melancholy. Joseph was always moody and deep in his gloomy thoughts. He was always talking about death and dying, also talking about how he can't wait to join his family. When their son was four years old, she wanted to enroll him in school, but Joseph said no. Joseph told her that he doesn't want the child to be in school and he doesn't want the child to go to church. So these were things that were like odd to Angela who was like, wait a minute, why don't you want our child to go to school when we can afford it? Angela herself is illiterate, so she did not go to school and that was why she really wanted their son, Joseph Jr. to go to school. But when Joseph was opposed to the idea, it kind of made her confused. However, Joseph himself consoled her by telling her that he is planning to relocate them to Abuja and when they get to Abuja, their son would attend a better school. And that was how Angela had to hold on to that promise, hoping that he had the better plans for their child. There was another instance when Joseph had a nightmare and told Angela that, Hey, Angela, I had a dream and in my dream, myself and our son, Joseph, died. Angela claimed that Joseph told the dream with some sort of joyous attitude. She claimed that Joseph told her the dream in a way that made it seem as if it was something he was looking forward to. Even the dream alone was scary enough, but she didn't think too much of it. She just like, okay, we'll pray over it. And that was how that passed. The next sign that Angela would have picked up on was the fact that Joseph did not have any friends. Now, this was something really serious. According to her, the only time she saw Joseph's friends was during their marriage introduction when they went to Benway State. She claimed that Joseph had a guy and a woman accompanied him to the village because, you know, he's an orphan and he did not have any family. And so she had understood that part. But the two friends who came with him to Benway State to ask for a hand in marriage, Angela claimed that she never saw those two people again all through the course of their marriage. Even when their child was born, those two people never came to show themselves. Those people never came for the child naming ceremony. Those people never came to visit. And every once in a while, she would ask him, how far are your friends? How are they doing? Are they not going to come and visit? She claimed that Joseph would pick up the phone and talk to them on the phone. And looking back at it then, she realized that maybe he wasn't even talking to anyone on the phone, but just claiming that he was talking to them just so that she can calm down with her suspicion. That is if at all she was even having any suspicion. So it's ironic that those two friends never showed up again. It's ironic that she never heard from them or even spoke to them on the phone. It was just a little confusing to her as to how come those friends of his never came around. And he never actually did have any friends in the neighborhood. He never mingled with people in the neighborhood. He never spoke to anyone. And that leads us to the next sign that should have probably given it all away. He had a job. Joseph was a lawyer like he claimed. Joseph claimed to be practicing law. Now, Angela recalled that all through their marriage, she was the one who left early from the house. She usually left first to work, that Joseph left around 8 while she left around 7 to open a business at her shop. So, she realized that there is a chance that this man probably never went to work. But while they were in the marriage, whenever she came home, she met her husband Joseph at home. And that was when Joseph would tell her, I'm just coming back, I'm just coming back. Oh, I came here before you. Oh, I arrived before you. From what she remembered, she left home daily before him with the hopes that he leaves afterwards for work. Whenever she came back, she also believes that he too was just coming back from work. So these things never really occurred to her, but she knew she did not know his job. She never went to his office or wherever he claimed he was working at. All she knew was that he was a barrister and that he had money. He always provided. Even back at home, he was always taking care of her family and so that was why they didn't even bother him to pay up the bride price because he was taking care of the people at home he was taking care of her people at home so the man always had money apparently it didn't occur to her to check his work after all he was providing for the family but looking back at it now she realized that maybe this man never indeed even went to work a day she never even saw any of his co-workers 
So this was basically how Angela lived with Joseph all through their marriage, even raising their child. And in as much as this man kept giving her hints, this man kept acting weird and strange, she just couldn't see through all of these things. Because in the end, he was treating her well, he was providing for the family, and she had to stay married because this is what she has always wanted for a long time. However, in March of 2017, everything would change. That was when she would learn the biggest secret that her husband had been keeping from her. Now, how did this woman find out the truth? Well, in a moment, we will get to that. But before we continue, please like this video, comment what country you're watching from, click the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed, and also turn on the bell button so whenever there is a new video, you would get notified. But more importantly, please let me know what country you're watching from. So, back to the story. In March of 2017, Angela decided that, okay, now their child is five years old or thereabouts, she is ready to expand her business. She wanted a bigger shop other than the kiosk she was renting at the time. So she approached a man by the name of Alaji Usman. This man had a plaza where there are some shops he left to rent. And so Angela saw one of the shops and opted to rent it. She met Alaji Usman and Alaji Usman told her that, see, I'm going to rent this shop to you, but you would have to provide your father or your husband or someone who is a man that can vouch for you. Alaji Usman did not want an irresponsible woman in his shop, so he made sure that he did some kind of background check for the tenants renting his shops. So from what we know, all the other shops had been rented, so it was just this one that Angela wanted. So the man was like, okay, I'm going to keep it for you, but get your husband to come and meet me so that, you know, he can vouch for you. I want to see your husband. I want to know you're married. I want to be sure that you're a responsible woman. And Angela was like, no problem, don't worry about that. Angela went home and told Joseph that, see, I found a shop and the man needs to see you so that he can let me rent the shop. So you would have to go and meet the man and tell him that you are my husband. And Joseph was like, okay, fine, no problem. I will do that, don't worry, no problem. However, Joseph never went to meet Alaji Hood's man. Days were passing and it was about going over weeks now and Angela hadn't rented the shop because Joseph hadn't gone to meet Alaji Hood's man to introduce himself to him. So eventually, Alaji Hood's man would meet Angela again and tell Angela, see, you have to hurry up with this. Get your husband to me. I'm traveling to Abuja soon and if I travel, you won't be able to get this shop and someone might get it before you. And Angela was like, my husband is very busy, that's why he's always going to work and all of that. And so Alaji Hood's man was like, okay, since he can't come to meet me, let me come and meet him. I just want to see him. I just want to be sure you're married. That's all I want. I just want the clarity. That you have a home and you come from a irresponsible background. That is what Alaji Utsman wanted to just do with the whole meeting of her husband. And so Angela was like, fine, this is my address. Come see my husband. We'll be expecting you. Except Joseph wasn't expecting him. You see, Angela would have told Joseph that this man was coming. Even though I don't know how that would have affected anything. Maybe Joseph would have cancelled it and probably gone to meet him himself. But Angela went home and did not tell Joseph that Alaji Utsman was going to come and visit them. And maybe if only Alaji Utsman came to visit, that would have been preferable. That would have been better. However, Alaji Utsman had a guest. Alaji Utsman had a, a, a second person following him. He had a guy by the name of Tagba Iyotim. Now, Tagba Iyotim was said to be Alaji Utsman's boy, sort of. It's unclear if they were friends or business partner, but they knew each other well enough. In fact, it was said that Alaji Utsman and Pagba were the ones set to travel to Abuja together for some kind of business-ish. So, Pagba and Alaji Utsman were friends. And when Alaji Utsman was going to Joseph Tiopenda's house, he went with Pagba. Now, this is where things get interesting because Pagba knew Joseph Tiopenda when he was alive back in 2005. Pagba knew Joseph from his previous life. Tagba was even so close to Joseph. In fact, Joseph used to date Tagba's junior sister, or was it elder sister? Joseph used to date Tagba's sister before Tagba's sister passed from cancer. So Tagba was familiar with Joseph. He knew him way back in Taraba State. They both used to stay in Taraba State. They both grew up together. Tagba knew Joseph up to his death. In fact, Tagba even attended Joseph's funeral and had pictures of the memories. So this was something that Tagba knew. However, Tagba did not know where they were going to. For Tagba, he was escorting his friend Alaji to go and see a client. So, when Alaji and Tagba got to Joseph's house, 
they knocked at the door angela was the one who answered and that was when angela was like oh my god i forgot to tell my husband you were coming anyway just come in and that was when angela rushed into the room to tell joseph that say we have a guest um Alaji is here to see you so just come and see him and let him just give me the shot as Tiopenda stepped out of the room into the city room to see his visitors tagba instantly recognized him but he wasn't so sure because for tagba this is not possible the man he knew joseph to be back in the day was dead he died from a car accident in 2005 and was buried. He even attended the funeral. Now seeing this man in front of him looking so much like the man he knows, like the man who used to date his sister back in the day, that man was shook. But maybe people do look alike, maybe people resemble, but that man wanted to be sure. As Joseph was introducing himself to Alaji, because Joseph had not probably spotted Tagba completely, Maybe he was shaking hands with Alaji. That was when Tagba looked at him and looked at him closely and was like, Big Joe. It was now said that Joseph panicked and startled. And that was when Joseph saw Tagba in his full face, recognizing him so much. Big Joe, that was the name they used to call him back then in Taraba State. Seeing him startled, seeing Joseph startled, Tagba was very convinced that this was the guy who had died in 2005 from a motor accident and was even buried that same year. Angela was there and was like, wow, you know him? It was not clear how the situation played out. But when Joseph recognized Tagba Yotin, it was said he excused himself to go back into the room. And Alaji was like, what's up? Did you know him? And the wife was like, wow, you know my husband? That was when Tagba was like, it's not possible. Is that your husband? How is that possible? I know that guy. I know Big Joe. He's dead. Big Joe has been dead for over 12 years now. He died in 2005. I know him very well. Tagba was so much vouching to Alaji Utsman and the wife that he knows that man who had just gone back into the room. He knows the man because the man also dated his own sister. Tagba was very sure that the man he has just seen was dead. And Angela was like, that's not possible. That's my husband. We've been married for over six years now. We even have a child together. You cannot say my husband is dead. Alaji himself was like, okay, what is happening here? What is going on here? He says, this woman I want to rent my shop, my shop to. What is going on here? So that was when Angela ran back inside the room to go and confront Joseph. Only this time, when she went inside the room, she could not find Joseph. She kept looking for him. I mean, they didn't have many rooms. So did he jump through the window? Where is Joseph? She just couldn't find Joseph anymore. What was strange was that she also couldn't find Joseph Jr., her five years old son. It would take her moments to realize that her husband and her son had just disappeared. When she realized this, it was said that Angela fainted, but Tagba and Alaji were there to resuscitate her. For some reason, it was said that the word spread around and people kind of knew about the story. It's unclear how the story spread, but when it happened, a lot more people got to be aware of it. Tagba went on to explain to her that yes, Joseph's family were killed in a communal clash but that was after Joseph had died. In fact, Joseph was the first person to die before the family even died. So he too was just as confused as to how come Joseph was there. It was unclear what happened afterwards but it was said that Angela became consumed with fear. She couldn't even stay in that house anymore. As days passed, as the story began to spread, as people began to hear more about what had happened to her, she relocated back to Benway State to tell her family what had actually happened to her and how her husband was a ghost. Clearly, her family accepted her back. It was said she stopped selling oranges and became a food vendor for the local community there. She basically moved on with her life. There was not much she could do. Eventually, although before, the, before she eventually completely moved on, it was said that news outlets reached out to her and she kept retelling the story over and over. Even people who had doubts had to confirm the story from people who knew her. This story was wildfire at the time. People heard of the story. People traveled from states to go and meet her just so they could see the woman who was once married to a ghost. It's unclear what happened to Tagba, your team and the rest. I'm sure he probably moved on with his life after convincing her of the fact that her husband was dead. In fact, he did not even need to do more talking. He did not even need to defend himself anymore. The man was no more. The man has disappeared. Her five years old son had also disappeared. So what other proof did Angela or did anyone need to know 
that this woman actually did marry a ghost. They saw she was pregnant. They saw she had a child. All of a sudden, the husband and the child has vanished. So how can anyone explain that? It was said that Angela's family took her for spiritual prayers. She was taken to church subsequently. They seek spiritual help and um, she was placed under intense prayers and intense delivery sessions. And um, I guess that was what helped her cope and what helped her move on and what helped her, you know, get past that unusual event. It's not clear, but it was said she probably never got married again. She just started focusing on her food vending business. But personally, I can't imagine what her life must be. I can't imagine how she must have dealt with it on a daily, if it ever runs into her mind. This is how the story pretty much ends. But my own biggest concern is why did the man have to disappear with his son? If he was a ghost, was the son also a ghost? Initially, when I first told this story on my TikTok, some people were like, it's a good thing he left with the child because if they were the ones, they would not want to have the child of a ghost. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think it makes sense for the ghost of Joseph to vanish with his son who was supposed to be human? Or do you think he never should have left with the child? Another thing again, do you actually still believe this story? I know this story is hard to believe. It's difficult to comprehend. Many people don't believe in ghosts. But the fact that this was documented, the fact that a lot of people even had to go and see this woman in person and they even had to see every party involved including Alaji Utsman and, Ala, uh, and Mr. Kagba Iyotin these, these were the people who spoke to the press to confirm the story this were, there were other people also, you know, correlated the story with Angela so this story at the time was a big deal because many people who were there Many people who witnessed it happen, many people who saw it happen or who heard it at the initial time basically spoke out and spoke about the story, which is why many people believe that this thing actually did happen. So this is a story of how Angela found out her husband was a ghost. Do you guys think that he should have disappeared with the son? Or do you think he never should have left with the child? Or do you think the child was also a ghost? Because when they asked Angela, she said, yes, her husband had some weird behaviors, which was all the things I listed at the initial time, all the signs that he gave, all the melancholy, all the death talk, all the fact that he was having dreams of him and the son dying. So, and the fact that he never had friends, the fact that his two friends who came with him on their wedding day was never seen again. Is it possible that those two friends were also dead? I would like to know your thoughts on that part too. So, all the signs were there for the husband, but she never saw any signs on their son. Angela said she never noticed any strange behavior on their son, that the son was relatively normal. The son was relatively healthy. The son was just a regular kid. There was nothing odd about the son. He did not have nightmares. He was not being dark. He did not have any strange behavior. She was just surprised that the man was able to disappear with the child. What are the chances that Joseph Tiopenda is probably somewhere in another part of the world probably raising that child with another woman? Who knows? Somebody might probably be somewhere married to a ghost man and raising the child of a ghost. What are the possibilities? Because I don't think if indeed he was truly a ghost and he disappeared when he was caught there, there's a chance that he had probably gone somewhere else to continue the life that he was living with that child. Because I don't think they popped into thin air. I'm sure they are probably somewhere living life as regular human beings again. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to also let me know what country you're watching this from. Thank you.